Hello, Lamb of God family and Cornerstone family. I'm Pastor Tim Hobson. Of course, you know Pastor Tim Forstoff. God bless you. Uh, we thought maybe two Tims would be better than one. And so uh, we're teaming up this week to share some daily devotionals with you called The Final Lessons of Jesus. And we invite you to come on this journey with us as we look at the last lessons, the last actions of Jesus. And we believe that he saved some of the best for last. Just like he turned the water into wine, uh, we believe that he has some gems for us to learn together today as we begin to ramp up towards Easter and celebrate Resurrection Sunday. So to start us off with, Pastor Tim's going to do our de devotion for today. All right, thank you, 2 Timothy. <laughs> for the listening audience, I am 1 Timothy, first in rank, first in preeminence, Ooh. first in importance. Uh, so I'm going to take the first lesson. <laughs> Is that good for you? That's, that's good for me, yeah. Go for All it. right, on Palm Sunday, we talked about Jesus coming in on the donkey and being proclaimed as the next king. The scripture says at the end of that day, he walked into the temple and looked around, and then he went back home, probably to Beth Bethany. And then on Monday, he came back into the city, back to the temple, and he cleansed the temple. I want to talk about cleansing the temple. The passage of scripture is Matthew 21, verses 12 to 15. We're going to have it up here on the screen for you. Let me just read this passage, and uh, we're going to glean some truths out of this. What is Jesus saying to us today? Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Well, let's take a look at this passage, see what the Lord would have to say for us, to us, here on this Monday of Holy Week. We see in this passage of Scripture of Jesus cleansing it. Now, the Bible says that Jesus was passionate for his temple, passionate for the house of God. It tells us that in John chapter 2, verse 17. He was jealous, passionate for God's house, for God's will, for God's word, for God's glory. And Tim, don't you think that one of the things that is missing many times in Christianity today is a passion for the house of the Lord? Yeah, and there's so many other things that seem to distract us, you know, from that, that devotion to God. And, uh, and so those are some of the lessons that we're going to be looking at here this week, is just focusing our attention on heaven and on God and on his church. And I've been praying, you know, during this time of, uh, well, we have the coronavirus and we're sheltering at home and having to do things through live stream. And I've just been praying that uh, God is working in the people of God, a desire to attend church, to be a part of the body, to assemble, to love the word and all those things. And, you know, that's one of the lessons that Jesus is teaching us here. And so let's get into this. What did Jesus want? One of the things he wanted was a house, his house, that would keep the main thing the main thing. He tells us in this passage of scripture that uh, he wanted his house to be a house of prayer. But they had turned it into a place of merchandise, a place of making money. They really were dishonest and ripping off the people. And Jesus is trying to get their focus back on the main thing, prayer. The word of the Lord, keeping the main thing, the main thing. I think that needs to be in God's church. He wants that in our hearts. Don't you think so? Yeah, absolutely. I think the challenge is that uh, while we are going through these points, to remember that we also are you know, the temple yes. of the Holy Spirit. And so, so our, hearts, our hearts can be filled with other things too, just like the temple is filled, the clutter. Right. So, yeah, the house of prayer starts right here. It does. starts right in our hearts and, of course, in, in the, the corporate church as well. The next thing I see there is that uh, Jesus wanted his house to be a house that, where sinners are welcomed. You know, they set up uh, all these money changing and the selling of this and that. They set it up in the court of the Gentiles. And that was a place in the temple where the Gentiles, people from all the other nations who had a heart to worship the God of Israel, to come and participate in worship. But they set up all those tables, all that merchandise, all that activity in that court of Gentiles. And they were literally crowding out the Gentiles. 
That's why he says he wants his house to be a house of prayer for all nations, all nations. And sometimes I think uh, as a church, uh, we sometimes forget the main thing that we are supposed to be preaching the gospel, welcoming sinners. Jesus is a friend of sinners. And that ticked him off that the Gentiles were being pushed out so that they could uh, do their merchandise. Yeah, I mean, the, sometimes we get into these holy clubs and we think this is all about us and just, just our holy huddle, you know. But uh, I love that Jesus welcomed sinners because that's me. I'm yeah. one of those. Yeah, so we personally need to welcome sinners, right? and be friends of sinners, and also our church needs to welcome sinners as well. The third thing I see in this passage of Scripture is that Jesus wanted his house to be a house where healing takes place. The Bible here says that the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. The blind and the lame, a place of divine healing, physical healing, emotional healing, family or marriage healing, relational healing, obviously spiritual healing, the idea of uh, uh, forgiving us of our sins and saving our souls, how important that is. But a place of healing. Too many times I think uh, God's church is a place of judgment, a place of criticism, a place where these things aren't taking place. But uh, Jesus, when he was in the temple, he healed people in the temple. And I think that is so important, don't you? Oh, yeah. I, just, I always think of Jesus and people just rushing towards him. And you don't rush towards someone that you're feeling judged by or someone you're afraid of or someone that's going to, you know, point something out like that. But someone who has hope and love and healing like he has. So we want to be like that for people, too. Absolutely. One of the things I love, uh, Pastor Cornerstone, you know, on Sunday mornings and also on Wednesday nights when we come together, I almost always end the service with a, with a call to salvation. And I've seen so many people through the years get, get brought into the kingdom of God through that call to salvation, prayed with families to be healed, prayed with people with physical illnesses to be healed. God loves that because Jesus went about doing good and healing all. The Bible says that we're oppressed of the devil. And I just think that his house should be, be a house of prayer. It needs to be a house where sinners are welcomed. It needs to be a house of healing. And also, it needs to be a house where Jesus is worshipped. The Bible here says that the children cried out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David. And of course, the religious people were very indignant over these things. But I think that's important as children of God that we worship him. He's the center of all things. Jesus is the focus. We worship the Lord himself. He is to be glorified in the house. I love this, that uh, God's house is a place where children of all ages are welcome to come and worship the Lord. Yeah. And I, I always love the idea of worship is as we are worshiping the Lord, we are being filled, you know, with that. Our souls are being filled mm -hmm. with the love that we need to do the things that Jesus was doing too. Yes. So, yeah. so this, this Easter week, we're talking about the last lessons of Jesus you know, he cleansed the temple twice, the very beginning of his ministry and now at the very end of his ministry. It's important for Jesus to get the stuff out of our own personal lives and also to have a church, a corporate church, where he is honored and glorified. One of the last lessons is keep the main thing the main thing. Make it a place of healing. Make it a place where sinners are welcomed. Make it a place where Jesus is worshiped and glorified. And so you take that to heart. It's been great to be with you today. I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, thank you for that awesome lesson, Pastor Tim. And just reminded that the church is not a building. And so now we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God's presence. Even though we can't get, gather physically this week, uh, we are still the church. And we can still be uh, that presence of Christ to those around us. So let's use our technology. Let's share these messages. And, and let's, uh, let's offer prayers for people. Offer uh, healing for people, and let's continue to be the church in Jesus' name. In God Jesus bless you name. and your family. Hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow.